Okay, welcome back. We're here live in New York City. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise, and sometimes we have our own events. And our event is Big Data NYC, hashtag Big Data NYC, in conjunction around Big Data Week, Strata Conference, Hadoop World. I'm John Furrier, the founder. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante. And our next guest is Prakash Nanduri, CEO and co-founder of Paxata. Uh, congratulations, uh, welcome on theCUBE, first time on theCUBE. Thank you. First time on TV, web TV period for your exclusive announcement uh, here on Side the Cube. This is our first, well, our, actually our second, we had Traseda launched on theCUBE. Okay. Our second company launching on theCUBE. Uh, tell us what your company's doing, launch your company, go. Thank you very much, uh, very excited that today Paxata is launching the industry's first adaptive data preparation platform. Uh, we are launching with live customers. We're also going to be announcing three very important and strategic partnerships with Tableau, ClickView, and Cloudera. And last but not least, to fuel our growth, we are thrilled that we've closed our next round of financing led by Excel Partners. And uh, we are- Ping Lee? Um, Dinesh Katyar, Samir Gandhi, and the rest of the team at Excel. They're okay. big supporters. They've been supporters okay. right from the beginning. I interviewed them at the Excel uh, Stanford event. Yes. Shamir. Yes. They Good. led us, they led our uh, Series A, and now they're leading our Series How B. How much in funding do you guys take in so far? So far, totally 10 million. On two rounds. On two rounds. Okay. And we just closed our Series B with 8 million in financing. So you did a lot with a couple million. Yes, we did. We are thrilled that we've been extremely uh, capital efficient. Uh, in fact, since we began in early 2012, we've gone from um, you know, having a prototype to having a full live product uh, on our multi-tenant cloud. We have um, live customers, several live customers who uh, we are announcing, uh, including the Pabst Brewing Company, um, uh, Dannon uh, and Box, and a couple of other very large customers. Uh, so we're thrilled about that. And uh, we promised ourselves when we went up, when we started this journey, that you know we would not launch uh, just because we have been funded or just because we have founded a team. We wanted to have our customers and partners launch us. And today, I'm very proud that we have achieved that milestone, where we're launching with some of the leading brands uh, gaining value from our product, um, and then we're also. Uh, in this journey together with very strong partners such as Tableau, ClickView, and uh, Cloudera. So why did you start the company? It's a great question. So my personal journey has been, entire, my entire uh, professional career, I've been in information management, data management. Uh, I was one of the uh, pioneers of the master data management space uh, when I co-founded a company called Velocell, which is now part of TIBCO, and is TIBCO's MDM platform. Um, after that, I spent a significant amount of years both at TIBCO and SAP um, and was very, very much involved in the whole uh, BI analytics strategy. And as I was going through this journey, I clearly identified this white space, this bridge between, or this, this missing link, frankly, between the visualization and analytical tools on top, such as Tableau and ClickView, and then the core data management, next generation NoSQL data management platforms, such as Hadoop and SAP HANA at the bottom. What was missing was the middle link around data preparation, which centers um, on the needs of a business analyst who spends way too much time in taking all these raw data sets that they're getting from Hadoop and other sources and bring, putting them together in data that is ready for analytics. And what you find is in an enterprise, there are a number of analytics tools because there are multiple analytical needs. Um, you have multiple data sources, whether they are within the enterprise or outside the enterprise. And the biggest challenge in an analytics exercise is for a business analyst to very rapidly prepare uh, the data that is to combine, to enrich, to merge, and to clean the data sets and get it ready so that they can visualize or analyze that data in any tool of their choice. Uh, and that's where we thought that it's fantastic to have this uh, piece. We thought that that was the white space. 
and we com came together in early 2012, and here we are today. Talk about the, um, well, two questions. One is, yes. what's more disruptive right now, the BI side of the business, business intelligence, or the data warehouse transformation in those markets? And then two, tell us about your go-to-market technology. Was it cloud, multi-dimension, yes. multi-tenant cloud? So yes. first, BI or DW, data warehouse, and business intelligence, which one is going to be the driver? Which one, if you had to weight it, like is it business intelligence more important? Uh, I think, I think you can't say one or the other. It's a yin and yang. So what has happened, if you look at the last five to 10 years, tremendous amount of innovation on the BI tool side. The big difference there has been self-service BI, where the business user has been able to do analytics on their own. Products such as Tableau and Click, you have really driven that. Uh, and that continues. If you see their growth rates, you see that, that growth in self-service BI is really happening. Yeah. At the same time, when you look at the data warehouse uh, market, you see that it is impossible to maintain the cost economics of, of the large big data sets that uh, companies require. And therefore, there's a, there's a need for new technologies. And uh, just today, I was, um, I was uh, with, the, with the folks at Cloudera, and it was absolutely true that as the enterprise architecture is changing and there is a need for both structured and unstructured data, y the traditional data warehouse technology cannot handle the economics of what the current day uh, analytics needs are. Therefore, I believe that it is a yin and yang. Both the warehouse uh, market is evolving and the analytics market is evolving. And which is pulling which? Frankly, it always starts with the business pulling the need in the enterprise. So the business is wanting more data for analytics and decision making, which is driving the entire stack underneath. And so help us understand a little bit more about what you do and, mm -hmm. and sort of how you do it. So you're talking about this middle layer between yes. the viz, the visualization and the, whether it's a key value store mm -hmm. or an in-memory database. And, and, and so it sounds like you've figured out a way to automate the merging, cleansing, mm -hmm. preparation. So pre preparation, data preparation means it's ready to be analyzed. Yes, is that right? Absolutely. O okay. So, so is, am I right? You've automated that 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 process. That is right. So the innovation that Paxata brings to the market is that for the very first time in the industry, a business analyst and not a very deep technical person, a business analyst, can very rapidly merge structured, unstructured data, whether that is personal, proprietary, premium, or public data sets, whether they are within the enterprise or outside the enterprise. They can bring those together, they can merge them, clean them, and get them ready for analytics. Now what they do is they are more interested in putting the data together and looking at what an analytics problems they want to solve, and the Paxata system using our intelligent algorithms and very powerful distributed computing technologies in conjunction with technologies such as Hadoop does all the heavy lifting of auto automating that particular process. You're absolutely right. Okay. So you're talking about the cloud. I want to get, you didn't get the cloud multi-tenant thing yeah. in there. So what is the product, the cloud, is it cloud-based? The product is, um, it's consumed via the cloud, absolutely. So Paxata offers, Paxata offers our solution uh, via our multi-tenant cloud, uh, uh, cloud, and a business analyst, all, has to, all he or she has to do is to sign up for our, uh, in our account, be able to load data right, uh, right away, merge it, do their work, and then be able to either automate, automate the export to a tool like Tableau or ClickView, or to basically um, you know, um, extract a CSV file and then load it into even an Excel spreadsheet. So talk about the, the secret sauce a little bit. What's the tech behind what you guys have the done? The technology behind it, which our co-founder Dave Brewster actually came up with, uh, is centered around a set of proprietary algorithms that detect relationships across multiple data sets, whether they are structured or unstructured. And after detecting the relationships, there is a smart way using probabilistic techniques to figure out what is the best join for the data sets. We are using text analytics and semantic technologies in order to automatically find the, uh, the relationships across different data sets, uh, varied data sets, but then not just to find the, um, the relationships, but actually to merge those data sets together. And most important, 
semantically type the data so that you can now intelligently enrich the data based on the meaning and not the metadata or the model, but the meaning of the data drives how you enrich it, how you clean it, how you merge it. So you're inferring context. Yes, absolutely. S using math, essentially. Math, statistics, and graph theory, yes. So latent semantic indexing and, and, and You got and it, like. you got it. So we are using latent semantic indexing te uh, techniques, statistical cluster graphing, and pattern recognition all together in a distribu distributed computed environment. Now why, uh, now this, is, this, tech, so this, this technology's been around for a while, yes. right? But it's, it's, it's not been commercialized mm -hmm. in, a, in a cost effective you know, way. Mm -hmm. you know, what's been the catalyst for you guys to able, be able to bring that that's to a, market? That's a, that's a very good question. So what has happened is there's been a number of critical catalysts that have come together. So the first thing, if you look at the lowest level, distributed computing, and the ad advancement of um, uh, technologies such as Hadoop have really made it very, very much more economical to be able to uh, manage and process large amounts of data. That's a really important piece. The second thing that is uh, very critical is in-memory technologies and being able to, uh, to have in-memory technologies. The third is the use of algorithms which were able to be um, uh, you know, um, uh, developed in such a way that they could they could be executed in parallel across large, large a large scale, uh, at, a, at an effective cost, which was impossible in the past. And the last but not least is the next generation visual technologies, which allows us to deliver a solution which is very very simple for the business analyst. So to a use. perfect storm for, for you guys and and and. I was going to say, you've seen examples of this before, but very, very small scale. Yes. This, they, they couldn't economically scale yes. in, in the past. This is a, have you, I mean, have you studied, I mean, obviously you've studied it, but what, what are your thoughts on the TAM? I wonder if you could share that with us. This is, I would think this is an enormous opportunity. So this is a very, very large TAM. We uh, estimate our addressable market to be uh, anywhere between 13.5 and $16 billion in the next three years, in, uh, ending December 50, 2015. We look at this primarily as being a subset of the larger addressable market that enterprise analytics as a whole has. And we are focusing on the data preparation piece of that. And if we look at that, the segmentation goes across three levels. It, it goes across the ad hoc analytics use cases, it also goes to analytical applications in the cloud, such as Anaplan and others. And last but not least, the next generation data warehouse. You know why I love this is, is and I, I, I can't speak to the tech, but I'm dying to learn more and bring in some of our guys who can, can go deeper. Um, you are attacking the labor component yes. of the marketplace, which today is nobody gets revenues for it. Companies just spend, and they would much rather spend money with you mm -hmm. to save time than having to spend their own time mm -hmm. you know, to get but to the that lab point. The labor is absolutely one piece, but the other piece that is there is, if you look at any analytics exercise, 80% of the time is spent in preparing the data, and only 20% of the time is spent in analyzing data. That's what I've seen across my enterprise. Yeah, isn't that 80% of the time on, on labor, like non-differentiated heavy lifting? Uh, that is true, yeah. but it's also one of the things that really De diminishes the value of analytics and getting to the right ideas. Which is why people throw up their hands and say, I forget it. Yes. Right? So all of us in business want to go around and make data-driven decisions. But we can't because the data preparation is the biggest hole. And now what you do is we're wanting to flip the equation and have people spend 80% of time in actually doing analysis and 20% in preparation. So the, the productivity gain is significantly higher than just the labor costs. Right, and that's why we believe that this is a game changer. And that's, that's true, the productivity game is, is, is enormous. It's not just, but with a lot of markets, it's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna essentially replace sort of an old way of doing things. You know, Linux replaces yes. Unix, okay? Or even, even, you can, even though everybody you know, says, oh, Hadoop, it's <laughs> incremental, but yes. we know Hadoop is gonna ultimately eat away yes. at some of the you know, data platforms. But 
this is really attacking spending that's not, like I say, going to any vendor today. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just really driving value from the customer side. Yes. So yes. That's a, I, I love that, that plan. And that's what, that's what our customers are delighted about, and that's what we've seen the tremendous traction from the customer side and the support from the customer side. Because when we see companies like Pabst Brewing Company, where you know, uh, the CFO there has questions like which product is being sold by which, uh, by, uh, by which distributor at what time in what, what retailer, and they want that answer fast. And their big problem is they're getting data from Nielsen, from their distributors, from their own backend systems, from their manufacturers, and they have to put this all together. And they spend months and it's days. It's a daunting task. This. So Ben Haynes is a, a customer of the box now. He's coming ben, on. He's ben, coming on I think yes. tomorrow or, or Wednesday. Yes, Ben yeah. Haynes is a wonderful supporter. And he has been truly a visionary. Big Cube, Cube a fan of ours. We've been doing crowd chats with him. It's Absolutely. been a great. Uh, Ben's awesome, yeah. yeah. Excited been, to have been him friend on. So okay, Cube. good. Well, so we'll ask him about what he's doing with Pixada. That Absolutely, was a, you should. You fantastic. should. He's, he's, he's been a great supporter, and we're delighted to have him as a customer. Awesome. Okay, so we are here breaking news, launching companies, analyzing and dissecting the Strata Conference, Hadoop World Trends, Big Data Week, New York City. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube with SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. Live on the ground for two more days after today. We'll have live coverage every day. I'll be right back for a wrap up from day one from Dave, myself and Dave Vellante. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our, our wrap up after this short break.